everyone, it's Alice and I am here with our September book haul. Now, if you've been to our channel before, you will know that our book hauls sometimes get a little bit out of control. So in August, we hauled nearly 100 books, um, 99 books. And in June, I think, we hauled over 300. And every month I say, next month's gonna be better, that's gonna be less. I'm gonna control myself, I'm not gonna go to the free book box, I'm gonna stop buying so much from charity shops. And that didn't happen again. So I've got 44 books for you today, if I've worked it out right. And I'm embarrassed, and I'm actually really frustrated because I'd forgotten about most of these already. I picked them up at the beginning of the month and then was like, yeah, that's fine. And then in the middle of the month, I was like, I haven't hauled anything this month, it's okay. I can buy a couple of things from charity shops, but I had actually hauled quite a bit. So I'm just going to apologise in advance in case you can hear sleepy boy noises in the background because he is asleep, so we've left him here and he sometimes whinges in his sleep. So we'll keep an eye on that. And if he gets too late, I'll phone Sean and he can come back and take us for a walk. But yes, without further ado, here are 44 books that I probably should not have hauled this month. I'm going to start off with a little unboxing for you because this very exciting package finally got delivered and I'm excited and I want to show it off. So the first book we're going to haul, <gasps> Ezra, oh no, oh no, he is still asleep which is the more impressive part of the crying. Oh, sweetheart. Let me get your dada, let me get your dada. I will be back with you momentarily. Now, Ezra is gone, where was I? Let's unbox this package. God, I've just cut straight through the box so let's hope I haven't damaged the book because I will cry. It's in lots of bubble wrap. I think we're safe. Lots of bubble wrap. Lots of bubble wrap. My gold spray edition of Empire of the Vampire! <laughs> so this is the silver and purple edition, which I thought I had more purple on the front. I thought I'd seen that like all the bits that are actually silver foiling were purple. Um, so I'm a bit surprised that by the lack of purple on it. But also it's just so gorgeous. Like those sprayed edges and purple and silver is like my favorite color combination together. I think it's just so beautiful. So with like the plain black and then the purple, oh, oh, I love that. It's got the purple end papers. It has the Chastain family crest, um, house crest. I'm not quite sure, I haven't read it yet. I don't know whether it's houses or families, but um, the Goldsboro one is the only one that has the Chastain crest. And it's signed, and it's number 575 out of 2000. So that's really cool that it's also numbered. Um, this is my third ever Goldsboro book. I have An Ember in the Ashes by Savata here, and I have Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Um, so it's really cool to be able to add this one to the Goldsboro family, and I hope it never gets damaged ever, ever. So it is going straight back in its bowl wrap and away from my children. We might as well go from one fancy special edition to the rest of the fancy special editions that I hauled this month, so we'll get those out of the way. You will have already seen a few of these because I have done a couple of unboxings throughout the month. First up we have Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas. This is actually my second copy of this. I found this copy in a charity shop for a pound, um, but it has the red sprayed edges and it is signed somewhere if I can hold it open properly. Um, I'm thinking of either doing this as a giveaway when I read my copy, I can give away this copy to one of you, um, or I might give it as a gift to a friend if I really love the book. Um, I just thought I'd grab it when I saw it, 
because it's beautiful and signed and a pound. Can't really go wrong. Next up we have the Fairy Loot edition of After Love by Tanya Byrne. Um, this came in Fairy Loot's most recent box. Um, they did a two book box and one of them was this one and it is signed printed signature inside. I thought when I unboxed it that it was actually signed but it's printed signature. Um, but it's got the pink sprayed edges and it's got an exclusive cover because the normal UK colour is like really neon vibrant pink um, and this one just kind of emphasizes the purples and makes the pink a bit more focused. Um, I love this cover so much more than the original cover but because my other copy is a signed book plate I'm going to be keeping both anyway because I'm a problem. You can quite clearly see that I am very much a book hoarder. Next up we have The Hollow Heart by Marie Rutkowski. This is the Fairy Loot special edition of the second book in the Midnight Lie duology. I think it has another name I want to say Blood of the Gods, but I'm probably making that up. Um, but this has the orange stenciled leaves on the edges and the orange sprayed edges at top and bottom. And is also, oh my gosh, just folded the front page up, but like not noticeably, so it's fine. Too excited, damaging my books. It's also signed. Um, and this is the second book in the series, as I said. Um, I'm not sure why the author's name isn't on the cover and there's this really big blank space at the top um but it wasn't until I got it that I realized it was like that on the mock-ups um I'm not sure if it got missed off but it is a little bit off-putting but I haven't read the first one yet I haven't read this one yet I'm sure I'm gonna love them because I loved The Winner's Curse the first two books of the trilogy I haven't read the last one um but these are sapphic and stunning so I'll love them Next up we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This was Owlcrate's book of the month for August? Getting confused. Yes, yes, August. Um, so this was featured in my August book box battle video. I might link that down below in case you've missed it. This has the gilded silver edges. It has a signed page inside. It has a Ouija pick plaque turn why can I not remember what that's called Ple not a plectrum because a plectrum is a guitar thing and a Ouija board piece in foil on the cover um it has an absolutely stunning under the dust jacket that actually works as a dust jacket because it's got the book's title and the author's name on the spine um so that's really really stunning um, and it has this exclusive cover as well because the normal cover is black and purple and this is black, uh, white and pink. So that's really pretty. We've got The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bovellino. This was the Illumicrate book of the month for August and this is a completely exclusive cover. Doesn't look anything like the UK or the US version. I think the US version has a book on the cover um, and the UK version is illustrated so it kind of combines elements of the two. This has these stunning blue sprayed edges. It has the exclusive end papers. It is somewhere in here if I can find it. Signed. And it also has the foiling under the dust jacket of people stepping out of the books. So that's really cool. And again, like this is my favourite cover of, of any of, of this book. So that's great. And then we've got Fairy Loot's book of the month for August that came with After Love. And that is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This is the first book in a series that sounds like it's going to be a bit like A Court of Thorns and Roses meets The Cruel Prince. Um, there's a girl and some fae and... A love triangle I think um, has the orange on the top and the bottom and has the stenciled suns on the edge um, this is normally bluey green so they've changed the color scheme for the front cover unusual that it's orange because they don't normally do orange books you get the author's signature inside you get the under the dust jacket foiling and you get under the dust jacket artwork as well because fairy loot always go all out I think you know this by now fairy loot obey when it comes to their book customizations so that was another beautiful book I hauled this month. And as I said, those last three, they were all featured in Book Box Battle. And then I've got two copies of the same book to show you. Because one of these is Sean's. And one of these is mine. And can you guess what they are? Oh yeah, wait, it's Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Because I'm such trash that I pre-ordered a copy. And then Sean pre-ordered a copy. And then I pre-ordered the golds for a copy. I mean... Sean pre-ordered his copy after we already had my copy and the Goldsboro copy coming. I basically just ordered the Goldsboro copy in case my Waterstones version came 
in bad condition or was unsigned because I've had that problem with Waterstones before and then Sean's copy came in bad condition and they replaced it anyway so we've still ended up with three copies of this and there's another copy in my Illumicrate box on the stairs that I can't open yet because I always do book box battle when I open them all together I know that Illumicrate's book of the month for September was Empire of the Vampire so I know I've actually got four copies of this um I just can't open it yet and so that's fine I'll also be hauling one of these next month um but this has the black sprayed edges this has the somewhere in here signed page um and it has the Dillion family crest uh house crest thing under the dust jacket um Illumicrate has another one I can't remember what the other family is called and I don't know if it's easy to see Right, so there's Voss, Ilon, Chastain, and Divock. Uh, I don't know which one Illumicrate has, um, but they've got the third of the three, because for some reason there's four, but only three get feeling. I don't know. But another two copies of Empire of the Vampire for you. We'll then move on to Sean's birthday books, because it was Sean's birthday on the 11th, so we I got him some books for his birthday, and his dad got him a book for his birthday, so let me show you those. So Sean's dad kindly sent him The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett. This is the first book in the Discworld series, which is a series we've wanted to start for a while. Um, we've got a few copies of books from within the Discworld series. I have a really beaten up copy of The Colour of Magic that I got as an ex-library book, so it's nice to have a perfect condition lovely covered edition um that we will eventually read when we are starting our Discworld journey i got sean a copy of the silmarillion by J.R.R. tolkien um he liked the design of the cover i'm not a tolkien fan and i don't want to read this with him but he's going to force me to read it with him eventually so that's going to be fun i also got him dragon city by katie and kevin sang this is the waterstones exclusive version with the sprayed stenciled dragon scales on the pages um i've been buying these for him every birthday and we now have three and haven't read any of them but at least we have matching copies and he loves dragons and he really liked um katie sang's writing when i read something else of hers with him i think it was one of her young adult books as Catherine weber i can't remember um but we're pretty sure we're gonna like these so i don't mind continuing to buy them even though we haven't read them and also they're short we can get through these quite quickly and last but not least i got him a hardcover of oathbringer by brandon sanderson found this in a charity shop it's quite beaten up but we've got the hardcover of the fourth book in the way of the kings uh stormlight archive series and we now have a hardcover of the third one as well so we can try to get hold of hardcovers of book one and two and then we'll have the first four in order in hardcover and then we can buy the first one when it is released. Talking of Brandon Sanderson, now it seems like a perfect time to tell you about the Kindle books that I hauled this month. The first of which was Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the sequel to Skyward. Um, it's going to be a trilogy. The third book, which is Cytonia, is coming out at the end of the year. Um, but the second book was on 99p Daily Deal, so I decided to grab that. I also grabbed Traitor's Blade by Sebastian D. Cassell, which is the first book in the Great Coat series, I think it's called. The Great Coats Quartet, I think. Um, but Jade from JD Ray Reads is obsessed with Sebastian and Castell and with these books and so I thought I might as well give it a go. I've been interested in it before and the third book kept coming up on the daily deal but not the first one so when the first one came up I grabbed it. I also got The Shadow in the Glass by J.J.A. Harwood. This is a Cinderella retelling and it's new and it was 99p and it was a debut and it sounds interesting so I grabbed it as well as The Rehearsals by Annette Christie which is Groundhog Day but they're at a wedding rehearsal and basically they get to the end of the day and the rehearsal's gone so terribly that they call off the wedding and they split up. And then the next morning they wake up and they have to live all again and they know what's happening but none of the guests do. So I think that could be a really fun rom-com about like the meaning of love and like how much it actually takes for you to end a relationship because I can imagine that they'll try and avoid the things that made them break up and it might be a happy ending in the end. No, so I can imagine it will be quite a happy ending to the story and I think it'll be an interesting one to read. And I also got The Devil's Advocate by Steve Cavanaugh. I was re recommended this book by my mum, not because she's read them but because it had come out on the Friday and it was on the Kindle Daily Deal on the Tuesday and it was only 99p and it was a brand new release and everybody was raving about it so mum was like why don't you grab it and then when you eventually read the rest of them you've already got that one ready and it doesn't take me a lot to be convinced to buy a book as you can tell by these massive hauls so I did that 
Next up, we'll move on to the books that I got from charity shops this month. So we'll finish off this month with the free books that we collected from various locations. So starting off with charity shop books, we've got Horse in the House by Lucy Daniels. This is one of the animal art books. I've been slowly but surely collecting these when I spot them in charity shops because I loved them when I was younger. I think Sophia will love them. And I picked this one off the shelf today and she was going, Nino, Nino, Nino. So she was really excited before I'd even offered to get it for her. So of course I grabbed it. We've then got two Stephen King books, which are Cujo and The Eyes of the Dragon. We're slowly but surely collecting all of our Stephen King books and reading basically none of them, uh, <laughs> which isn't great. Um, we're hoping to read more Stephen King. We're hoping to eventually read all Stephen King. So we keep getting them in charity shops and we see them for cheap and when it's ones that we don't have. And we didn't have either of these. I've then got The War of the Flowers by Tad Williams. Um, I asked my friend who likes fantasy, whether he had read this book and he said no, but he said he recommends Tad Williams writing because he's, I think 75% of the way through one of Tad Williams' other books and he was like, yeah, it's a really good writing style. So I trusted Gary's recommendation on the writing style and decided to pick up this book. It is a standalone fantasy. Um, I'm considering how chunky it is. I think it's gonna be a very detailed in-depth one and also the font is tiny too. I hadn't noticed that when I bought it, but it is. 750 pages so I hope it's good or it's going to be a chore to get through um but it just kept staring at me through the window whenever I was walking home from work I was like hmm Tad Williams Gary mentioned him so then when I went in the charity shop and it was still there I was like might as well I also picked up The Hanging Tree by Ben Aronovich uh this is the oh god eighth ninth book in the Peter Grant series does it have a list in the front? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, the sixth. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought it was. Um, I hauled a couple of these books a few months ago because I found them in charity shops for cheap and this was the only one I was missing, like, in the middle. So now I've got all of them. I think, possibly not Foxglove Summer, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, no. But it was cheap. It was in a charity shop. It's in brand new condition and for some reason it's like a trade sized paperback and all of the other ones these that I have are like normal sized paperbacks so it it doesn't match the rest of my collection. And I found the normal sized paperback in the free bookshop the next day but it was really really beaten up so I was so glad I bought this but frustrating that I still would have ended up with it either way. But yeah I'm not sure what these are about. I know that it's like a psychic? I don't know, he's supernatural, um, stuff's going on in London, it's like he's a detective but it's supernatural crimes. It sounds really awesome um, and my friend Jenny recommended these to me years ago and I just haven't read them yet, so I should do that. Just start them, at least, if I own most of them. We've then got another Terry Pratchett book which is going postal. Um, as I said, we're collecting Discworld, we didn't currently have this one, it was cheap grabbed it. I've then got another two books that I got off of Gary's recommendation which is Lord Brocktree and Redwall by Brian Jacks. These are both books in the Tale of Redwall series um, and they have really cute matching editions with like the little windows of the characters looking out with them which is super cute. So Lord Brocktree is chronologically the first book in the Redwall series but Redwall is the first book published in the Redwall series so I've technically got both of the first books in this series and I don't know which one to start with because of that. Gary told me to start with Lord Brocktree. My heart is telling me to start with Redwall because it was published first and I like reading books in publication order rather than in chronology order. But I think I'll trust Gary because he has read these and he's the one that told me that Lord Brocktree should come first. So I guess we'll start here. But it's like, what are the chances? I'd never heard of this series before. I'd never heard of... I'd heard the author's name before, but I'd never heard of Redwall as a concept. And then my friend recommends them, and then I find the exact book he recommends, and then two days later, in the same charity shop, the first book in the series. It's like, what are the chances of that? That was such a cool coincidence. We've then got The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. If people don't know what these are about, this is about then I, I don't know what to tell you because I don't really know what it's about either but everybody loves it I've got a feeling it is a gay retelling of Achilles story apparently it's really sad um makes everybody cry everybody loves Madeline Miller's writing um and Illuma Crate have announced that they're doing a special edition set of the two books so I thought I would buy this one because I found it in the charity shop really cheap read it really really quickly hopefully 
hopefully within the next two weeks because then before the special edition set goes on sale I will have read it I will know if it's worth buying the set if I loved them because at this point I would just be buying them in case I love them in the future and that's a lot of money to spend for something that I might not end up loving and I also borrowed Cersei from the library today so I'm going to hopefully read both of these before the Illumicrate set goes on sale um, but I had only been saying to Sean when Illumicrate announced that they were doing the set that I'd never seen these in charity shops or anywhere cheap before and then the next time I went in the charity shop it was there so again, fate Sean picked up The Bull and the Spear by Michael Moorcock. Don't know anything about this, but Sean's been slowly collecting all of Michael Moorcock's writing. Uh, on the back, it says he's like Tolkien and like Roger Zelazny. Um, I've heard Roger Zelazny's name, never read any of his stuff, but um, classic sci-fi, fantasy, and really trippy cover. Really trippy. There's like a leopard with some wings and a man turning into a tree with like a bull on his face. Uh... It'll be interesting to see what it's about. I also got One by One by Ruth Ware. Um, this was recommended by Bugs and Lala, who loves Ruth Ware's writing, and she's had some kind of hits and misses, but I think this was one of the ones that she liked. But it's a brand new hardcover. I found it in the charity shop for a couple of quid. And I'd never seen a Ruth Ware hardcover in a charity shop before, and especially not one that had been published so recently. So I grabbed it. And then the last two books we got from charity shops this month were Bear Time by Frederick Bachman. Um, everybody loves this book. Everybody cries at this book. It sounds very, very painful. Um, it's like a small town and a girl gets assaulted by one of the stars of the, uh, I think it's the rugby team, the hockey team. Uh, it doesn't say on the back, but I've got a feeling it's the star of the hockey team um, sexually assaults a girl and she kind of comes forward and the town has to decide whether they are going to support the victim or support their kind of golden boy. Um, and I think that's going to be a really difficult read. And I also got Perdido Street Station by China Myville. Um, had this recommended many years ago. Um, had forgotten it existed completely. Spotted it. It was like, ooh, I remember that name. So I bought it. And it is 860 pages and a standalone. So again, I hope this one doesn't suck because it's a very big investment if it does. Last but not least, I'll show you all the books that I got free this month. And to start with, I've got a pile of eight romance books that I found in a box. Um, it was a help yourself box and it was very late at night and I didn't want the books to get wet because it was starting to rain. So I took the whole box home and... Hopefully I'll enjoy them because I've been looking at reading more romance. Um, Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots reads a lot of romance and her recommendations always sound really interesting. It's just not a genre that I read a lot of. So hopefully I can burn my way through these, really enjoy them, and then I can move on from there. So I know nothing about any of these. They just look very cute, very kind of like easy reads. And that's kind of what I need at the moment where I'm in a bit of a reading slump. So I'm, I'm probably going to dip in and out of these sooner rather than later. So we have Winging It by Anna Jefferson, Sunset on the Square by Lilac Mills, The Dog Share by Fiona Gibson. I mean, it's about dogs. How can you go wrong? The Country Village Summer Fate by Kathy Lake, Just Friends and Just a Boyfriend by Lucy Keeling, Suddenly Single by Carol Wire, and Up Close and Personal by Catherine Freeman. So hopefully I'll enjoy at least one of these um, and I'll hopefully read them sooner rather than later. And then I'll probably put them back in the free box as and when I finish them, um, just so that more people can enjoy these. And then the ones that I've collected from the free book box this month are... Oh, only a little stack, but quite heavy. So we have Dragon Haven by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Rainwild Chronicles series. I actually got books one and three from the book box last month, so I'm guessing this one got donated at the same time and it's only just made its way into the box. So I am going to be keeping an eye out in case book four of the Rainwild Chronicles ends up in there. Um, but these are unread, perfect condition, and obviously free. So grabbing them for when I eventually catch up with Robin Hobb in the future. We have A Proof of the Couple by Heli Acton, which is a massive surprise. I wasn't expecting to see a proof in the charity shop. Um, this says, if love is a drug, why isn't there an antidote? So it sounds like it's going to be the kind of grown-up version of Delirium by Lauren Oliver, in which uh, love has been outlawed and has been told that it's a kind of illness and there is a cure for it. So I think it's going to be something similar to that. Um, it sounds really interesting if society's views on relationships are different and the norm was to be single would you risk everything for love i mean i'm so interested i'd been interested in this one on the library app spotted the proof 
thought might as well grab it. I've then got two Jeffrey Diva books, which are Praying for Sleep and Sneal Kiss. I've got a feeling these are both part of the Lincoln Rhyme series. Um, this one definitely is. Um, but I, again, a series I've been slowly gathering up over the years. Mum's really interested in them, so me and her have both been gathering them to hopefully start and binge through eventually. But two more free is not a bad thing. I've just realised which book, because there was a book that went missing at my parents' house that I was like, oh, I swear I'd picked up seven today and we could only find six. And I've now figured out which one it is because as well as 13 by Steve Cavanaugh, I also hauled 50-50 this month, I think. Um, I'm now wondering whether I picked up 50-50 last month and that was in last month's haul. I don't remember but either way, um, I got 13 this month. Um, I'm interested in reading Steve Cavanaugh. As I said earlier, I bought The Devil's Advocate this month. Um, I didn't realise it was the seventh book in a series. I thought it was the third one because I thought it only followed 50, 50 and 13, of which I have both. Um, but I will read these eventually. And hopefully they will be as good as everybody says they are because apparently they're really gripping and very fast reads. And then last but not least, we have Shadow Kingdom by Angelina J. Step. Stefford, Steph, um, and I will be honest with you, I only picked this up because that cover, man, that's stunning, like, it looks really intense, um, it's an independently published, um, so I don't know how it ended up in a book box in the middle of nowhere, um, but it's got a little map, and, yeah, self-pub last year, so yeah, I literally have no idea how it ended up in a book box in the middle of nowhere, but it says sworn to a goddess, one with her blade, one with her blade, a heart yet unbroken. Um, she's forced into the service of the Lord who tore her from her mother's arms. Um, she's left with a choice, run or work for the man she despises and earn the chance to see her family again. Um, it says it's a fae story, it doesn't sound very fae, but it sounds interesting. So I grabbed it. And those are the 44 books I've hauled this month. It's too many. I know that. Don't judge me. Most of them are free. But also, three copies of the same book. I'm embarrassed. Um, will I haul less in October? I don't know, because I haven't done September's book box battle yet. We haven't had September's curiosity arrive yet. So I'm going to have, like, six picture books and six book box books, seven because fairly we're doing a two book month, seven book box books and six curiosity books next month minimum. So that's already 13 books I'm hauling next month without even picking anything else up and that's if no pre-orders arrive of which I think I've got at least seven or eight coming, oh no. Uh, so next month's haul will probably be equally as big. November's haul might be smaller so if you like small book hauls I'm really sorry this is not the channel for you if you like big book hauls please give this a like and subscribe because every month our book buying just seems to be getting even more out of control so you'll continue to get very large and very fun hauls from us um if you've read any of these books and you would recommend them please comment down below and let me know where you think I should start because there's a lot of books here and I'm hardly reading anything so the likelihood of me reading any of these before the end of the year is not high but if you think I should, then tell me. And yeah, please pop back. We post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So we'll see you in a couple of days with another video and we'll do something because I have no idea what we're doing in a couple of days, but maybe we'll have read one of these by then, but probably not. Thanks for watching. Bye.